Hello and welcome everybody back to the Red Bra Project. My name is Renee, I'm creator and your co-host tonight. And I am so excited to bring our guests to you this afternoon, evening, whenever you're watching or listening to us, because we are gonna be talking about style. I'm not gonna give it all away, but we're gonna be talking to <laughs> Daphne Marie with episode number 82, who is a glamma, more on that in a little bit. A mom, of course, those are the two most important roles in her life that are full-time. We were just talking about how they're nonstop, but she's also a certified personal stylist and just is juggling all of the things. So Daphne, welcome to the Red Brawl Project. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Um, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your background and kind of where you're coming to from today? Oh my goodness. So I'm currently... Um based in the Augusta, Georgia area. Um, I'm central to like Atlanta, Columbia, Savannah, areas like that for people who don't know where Augusta is. By way of Pennsylvania, I'm Northern, born and bred. Um, <laughs> to the heart. Oh, girl, I like that. <laughs> yes, so we talked about that before. So yes, yes. Um, I am a grandmother of three, grandma. I don't let them call me grandma. I don't answer to that. When they say grandma, I uh -huh. look around. <laughs> especially my three-year-old she does it just to aggravate me she already knows how to pull my push my buttons at three I um <laughs> I'm a mother of I gave birth to four but I raised three my youngest son I actually had for my sister um she could conceive but couldn't carry full term so did that for her and then put everything on lockdown <laughs> Um, I am a certified personal stylist I fell into this occupation this is not something I dreamed of being when I was in middle school or high school. I was never the fashion girl. I was sneakers, jeans, and t-shirts or sweatshirts or hoodies. We grew, I grew up in the snow, so we was always trying to stay warm for the most part. <laughs> True. Hats, um, gloves, scarves. Yes. You can see our you eyes can, on the way like, out. So listen, masks are nothing for us. We grew up with masks on. That's <laughs> true. So um, I just kind of fell into this through some other ventures that I was doing at the time. And um, so that's how I got to where I'm at with the styling. I've been styling now for about 11 years, 10, wow. 11 years. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I think that is like, those are some of the best stories that we love to hear the, how you got into what you're doing now, because it always starts with, I feel like some of the best stories always start with, I never saw myself doing this. And this is how I got there. I have never been that, that glamorous um, chick. <laughs> I've, you know, I've never worn a lot of makeup. When I do, it's real light. Um, I didn't start wearing heels on a regular until I was 24. I was on kid number two. Um, by, the time, by the time I started even like liking heels, now my collection, I literally have a collection. Like I have heels that I bought one time for a photo shoot, never wore them again. They're just collecting dust. I'm getting ready to have a big pandemic purge too. So... <laughs> I'm getting rid of a lot of stuff because I've been buying more stuff during the pandemic. But um, so I was doing real quick. I was um, I had a promotions team um, that I built off of aspiring models in the area. We were doing photo shoots. I then got asked to be a part of a national organization that um, promoted um, body positivity in the plus size community. And they were branching out. They had different chapters in different cities. And I was one of the first national faces. Mm -hmm. um, so we were doing photo shoots every quarter for that to promote the movement and things like that. And I was dressing myself, of course. Um, again, I had at this point, I had no uh, school, no kind of education, no workshop, none. Of, I was just dressing myself, um, just had an eye for it. People started asking me to help them with their looks, started researching and said, hmm, Daphne, you can make some money doing this. So that's how I, I literally fell into this um then I started taking some workshops I took a workshop with um celebrity stylist or Lori or Lori Swank that was my very first workshop it was a one-day work it was her her very first workshop when she decided to start teaching um I drove to Atlanta took the workshop um and it just kind of been full speed from there I my main clientele is entrepreneurs women like me um I like to call us late bloomers even though I've been doing this for 10 years I haven't been able to uh, focus completely 
Um, I'm still not, but I can focus a lot more now that my kids are grown. You know, I don't have to worry about taking you to school, picking you up, having a school call me because something happened or something like that. So now I have more time during the day, mainly <laughs> to dedicate to my business. So I like to call us late bloomers. You know, we grandmas, we just getting our feet some people just getting their feet wet in business. Some people can actually focus on their business more now. Um, and a lot of people forget to, they forget that their style is a major part of their brand. So um, I teach, I educate. Yes, I do one-on-one styling. I dress you, I do closet edits and all that. But my main focus is to teach people how to develop their personal style. And when they want to rebrand, they already have the tools to do that. Mm. Daphne, I love it. I feel like there's so much there. Um, first of all, I think that it's really important to recognize you diving into kind of your second, third career after you yeah. have been that sole provider in person for your children. So kudos to you because that right Thank there you. in itself is a huge inspiration because a lot of people can sometimes think and woman, oh, you know, I'm too you know, old to do this or I, I can't start this or I've already put 20 some years into a career and this has nothing to do with what I've been where my right. specialization is. And so now, right. you know, here you are, you're like, no, this is how it starts. And it starts with yeah. one foot after another. So what did it look like um, when you decided to get more education? Like if you're going to get certified as a personal stylist, what does that mean for anybody who's curious about that career path? I did. So do your research. Um, definitely do your research. And it's crazy because when I first started doing this, I couldn't find anything like it was really hard to find um, classes online or in person, especially in my area. Like I always had to drive to Atlanta or Charlotte, you know, to a, a bigger city. Not that Augusta is small, but we just ain't booming really. You know, we're not booming like that. So yeah. <laughs> um, it was hard to find things. Um, now it's like overwhelming. Um, I did my certification. I actually have two. Um through uh, School of Style. Um, I, like I said, I got my certification in personal styling and I also have my certification in men's styling. There's a huge difference. There's a big difference between styling men and women. There's a lot more to it when it comes to men. Um, they're easier to work with than women <laughs> are, but there's more of a, you know, men's clothes don't come in a lot of different cuts and things like that you have to tell have a lot of their stuff has to be tailored um but anyway so just do your research um figure out who you want to work with it was never a big deal for me to work with celebrities um I wanted to work with people like me yeah. um I want to work with people who are just getting started or just being able to focus who maybe don't have a whole lot of money um that can build a wardrobe, you know, and a very functional wardrobe they love. It's a, you know, it's affordable and it's a process. It happens over time. I didn't go spend a thousand or five thousand dollars on a wardrobe in one day. Like it took me time to build up my wardrobe. I'm still building it up. I mean, things change. I my my likes change, you know, the things I like to wear, the things that look good on me. Um they change my body type, my body changes, exactly. you know, when you lose weight, you gain weight, like it's, it's a process and you just have to, just like with anything else in life, you have to be patient and you have to learn how to maneuver through it. So, um, but definitely do your research. There's all kinds of schooling out there now, if it's something that you're interested in doing, um, I would definitely say, make sure, I think the biggest plus for me was the people I learned from have been where I was and where I'm at. Um, they're experienced stylists already. They're not just someone who started a course and didn't go through everything that, you know, I went through at myself trying to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. Very good. Those are great tips. Um, and one of the cool things, so for our listeners and viewers, if you go to Daphne's website, which is your style should talk shit dot style. <laughs> I love that, by the way. Um, I, one of the things I really loved was looking at some of your photos. And you can really tell, like you already said, you educate your clients about how to dress themselves for themselves and their personality and their brain. Yes. And so it's all encompassing. But the thing is, is when, I wonder where you went. I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. Here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's okay. And so um, one of the cool things that's 
There we oh go. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is, we love the whole live aspect. So I'm sorry. Five, it's one and done. There's no Literally, perfection around here, Pete. I put no. my phone on do not disturb. I don't know how that came through. I'm like. Technology, the crazy wonders of it. <laughs> um, but what I was saying is I love that you look at your your kind of your slides and your your examples of your work and they don't all look the same mm -mm. you can tell how much work and effort go into that style for that person and you can feel some of that personality when you look at the individuals and i just love that about checking mm -hmm. out your your oh book. thank you yeah because i mean no two people are the same we all have you know we have people I mean, there's people whose style I admire. Like, I am a huge fan of Tracy Ellis Ross. I love her style. Um, and then we can go to the extreme and Janelle Monet. You know, I just, I had, there's a lot of people that whose style I like, but that doesn't mean that it's fitting for me. Um, one of my clients who's actually on my website, she is probably, I, we've been friends for years since I moved to the South. Um, she was probably, I don't want to say the most fun or the most challenging, but probably so far the one that I've had come out of her shell the most. She's an empowerment coach and an accountability coach. And she's very, she's dope. She calls herself the dope black chick. Awesome. Um, she's really her, she's a creative. And she was so caught in feeling like she always had to wear suits when she did speaking engagements and stuff like that. And I'm like, ma'am, no, mm -hmm. like, yeah, at the same time, you have to appeal to your audience, but you can still do that and be true to your personal style. So working with her was a lot of fun. And, and the main thing that caught her, I told her, I said, you're a creative, you should dress like one. Yeah. She likes bold colors. She likes funky clothes, you know, things like that. So we got her out of that box. And now she tells people all the time, I love my wardrobe. Like I love my clothes. I, there's nothing in my closet I don't like. And she knows how to mix and match things. That's one of my biggest things too. Like if you look at something and you can only wear, you can only visualize wearing it one way, don't get it. You know, you want to definitely have a bang for your book. So yeah. you want to look at something. If you can't figure out three ways to wear it, you don't need it. <laughs> Okay, so those are two really good tips. One, if you look at something and you can only see yourself wearing it once, it's not worth it. And no. two, if you can't see yourself wearing it three different ways, also not worth it. These are good. I was actually going to ask you if you had any kind of quick tips, one-on-one tips yes. too, and I've already gotten yes. two. <laughs> I love that. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit, I mean, you have, a, I feel like you have so many stories that has gotten you <laughs> to where you are today. Um, and there's all different types of, you know, situations and things we go through that help us grow. But when you kind of think back and you're thinking about when you really want to do something, but you have that fear kind of perking up, how do you deal with fear yourself? Like, you know, even when you made the career transition, I know you said you fell into it, but you had to take some bold steps eventually to keep oh, yeah. going. You know, I don't even know, like, I don't know if it's more, for me, I don't really describe it as fear. It's more, um, I have more like a doubt of my, of my abilities, you know, and I know a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people deal with this. Like I have people all the time, oh girl, you don't, you, 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 you know, you really good at this and you got an eye for this and it just come natural and it does, but people don't understand that when I'm doing it. So let's say, yeah, I got a client now and I'm working, I'm having a good time or I got three or four clients. But then when you have that downside, you start to second guess yourself like, what's the problem? I ain't got no clients. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I think for me, it's more of a, I'm always second guessing myself more than a fear. Um, I've never doubted that I could be an entrepreneur because I'm a hustler. I, I'm a go-getter. Um, never doubted that, but I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing either. Like my, my, my whole line of entrepreneurship was bookkeeping and accounting because I have a, a strong math background. So that's what I always thought I was going to end up doing, crunching numbers. And I still do it sometimes, but this is way more fun. Um, I'm actually making a difference in people's lives. Um, I've gotten a lot of testimonies, just how much, you know, people don't understand. Yeah, 
to you on the outside, it looks like we're just dressing people. We're just putting clothes on them. Mm -hmm. But when you get someone that comes back and says you built their confidence, you know, you, you lifted their self-esteem. That's huge. That's like major. Mm -hmm. Um, I know for me, it is like, that's what, when I get testimonies like that, that's what makes me say, okay, on to the next one. You know what I mean? Um, and I help bring people out their box. You know, people see stuff on a hanger. Oh, I don't know how that would look on me and put it on. You got to try it on to see how it would look. You'd be surprised. I have so many clients that be like, I would have never bought that dress. Or I would have never bought that jacket if I hadn't, hadn't had you with me to try it on or, or pushed me to try it on. So, you know, just little things like that have helped me overcome quote unquote fear. Um, but I've always been, you know, thankful, you know, I've been, I'm stubborn, you know, I don't, I'm not a big, I don't care what other people say about me type person. And I thank my dad for that. Um, mm -hmm. So I've never really cared, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So fear had never really been a big um, factor of mine. I think the, I think the only thing I'm like super fearful of is crazy. I'm, I'm scared of heights, but I'll get on a plane in a heartbeat. I don't like to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not getting on no roller coaster. Yeah. I'm not getting on that one that goes all the way to the top and drops real fast. I'm not doing any of that. <laughs> Unless it has a different, hopefully exotic destination at the back end. You're not getting Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. I'm a, and, and it's crazy because I, I, I feel like I'm a daredevil. But then when it comes to doing stuff like skydiving, I, see, I was all for skydiving until somebody told me that you literally sign away everything. Like you, th like if something, if you die skydiving, your kids can't sue. Nobody yeah. can sue. Oh no, I'm not putting my life in nobody else's hands like that. Even though when I get up and then I'm thinking I get in a plane all the time and I'm putting my life in that pilot's hand, but you know, they got different stipulations. You don't have to sign your, your, right, your right to your kids getting some kind of, you know, something out of it. So yeah. it's crazy, but yeah, I, I'm, I haven't been, my biggest thing is step out on faith. You won't know until you do it. Um, you're going to fail. So good. You're going to fail multiple times, mm -hmm. um, but you got to just get up, but take a minute. You can take a minute to cry, boo-hoo, whatever you need to do, have a drink, brush it off and keep, you know, keep going because eventually you're going to get to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And it might not, what you're trying to do may not really be what's for you. You know what I'm saying? That's like, like I said, I was going to do the number thing. And that just wasn't for me. That wasn't what God had in store for me, whoever. Like a lot of times what we have in store for ourselves ain't what somebody, you know, what's meant for us. Yeah, it's so true. And sometimes we can be so stubborn or diligent in pushing ourselves down that path. Yes. That we miss these little signs that may be popping up around us where, you know, God or the universe, whoever you believe in, mm -hmm. whoever you put your faith in is saying, here, here's me, try me, give me a go. And finally, right. one day you wake up and you listen and you're like, wow, I would That ain't even what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You find yeah. yourself saying, I would have never seen myself doing this, but this is how I got here. And I love it. And when you're doing it, when you're doing what you love, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. And that's what I've always told my kids. I was like, you know, I've never been big on them. Like only two, of, you know, my two of my kids, two of my three went to college, two of my four went to college. Like I've never pushed that college thing. I've never, you know, y'all do what, what y'all love, what makes y'all happy because then you'll get up and go do it. Yes. You know what I mean? If you don't like it, because I know when I worked in corporate America, I was like, Oh, I got to get up at six o'clock, yeah. you know, and go deal with these people and this paperwork. Now it's like, I get up when I want to, even though I'm still an early bird, yeah. but you know, I don't have to, my whole day isn't dedicated to work. You know what I mean? I, I make my own little schedule or whatever. So, and I've always taught them that it's, it's a process. You still got to work a regular job until you can, you're making the money you need to make doing what you love to do. Mm -hmm. But you look at your job. I look at my other if I'm working, I look at that as that's what's funding my job, what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? So you just got to have a different mindset mm. and a perspective on how, how your life is set up and how you want it to look. I was just going to say, I love that perspective too. And it is, it's all about perspective. Sometimes sometimes yeah. you have to shift your perspective for a short amount of time to get through whatever shit you're kind of trying to get through. <laughs> and then you can go back to Ain't that the truth. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, I think that you also hit on something that a lot of times when we, when we do look at somebody who's 
a designer or a stylist, or you look at pictures and, you know, I'm afraid to try that dress on, or gosh, I'm so frustrated with swimsuits because I, I don't want to put any on, anything like that. But I think that you hit on something that's really important. And that's when you are dressed in a certain way that you feel good about your inner confidence just kind of shines through and it happens. Like it, it yes. happens, whether it's a suit or, you know, athletic gear or swimsuit. Um, but that's one of the cool things, again, that is also, you can visually see it on your website, all of the different and unique styles you have for all of your clients. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to tell you too, I'm glad, you know, you'll hear a lot of times, I'm glad I don't look how I feel, or I'm glad I don't feel how I look. Putting on some clothes will change your whole day. <laughs> and if y'all haven't realized that yet in this pandemic, I don't know when you're going <laughs> to. I was going to say, I think most of us are coming out of like the sweatshirt pajama year with 2022. Yes, so the, the, the most leggings of us forgot and how the tank to tops. Yes. <laughs> like, what? how do I even put this stuff together? <laughs> right. You call me, I'll help you. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, I think I forgot how to do my hair and makeup, but we'll try. Yes. <laughs> it's crazy this pandemic oh my god it has been definitely interesting but yeah it'll definitely um you know putting on your clothes putting on something even if it's just to sit around the house you know putting on something nice and doing a little bit of um you know putting a little lip color on it really you know it 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 makes for a better day yes so um Daphne your perspective on fear too and just kind of the fact that you know what I'm going to do what I want to do and I don't really value other people's opinions I think that is such a strong mindset um and it's it's such a beautiful thing uh and then when you think about who has kind of surrounded you and supported you and I'm sure there's different people at different times of your life but do you have kind of like um a support group or kind of your cheerleaders that kind of are cheering you on I do um, a lot of my, a lot of my clients have become friends. Um, so they're always like, girl, you know, when I get to listen, I have two people. I literally probably reach out to at least every other day when I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. And they'd be like, Bit. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, my kids are huge supporters. Um, listen, and my, and my worst clients, Ooh. like they're the <laughs> hardest to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they'll be like mom how's this look but then they'll go my, especially my daughter she'll go to my how's this look to my son I'll be like what you asked me for like y'all in a whole house with a stylist and y'all still uh, it irks me but anyway so they're very they're they're very huge supporters um I've had some very um strong figures in my life male and female um and I think a lot of uh a lot of things that I've gone through <clears throat> um, have made me, you know, like I'm, I'm also my biggest cheerleader. Like when I get down and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this no more. It's like, really, Daphne, like, you know, when you, you know, and the crazy thing is, I know what I need to do. It's just a matter of kicking myself in the butt and be like, can you get up and do this? Cause you're missing out on funds, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, or whatever. So um, a lot of, a lot of things have played a factor in, you know, in where I'm at and, and my mindset and how I think, but I think me, I push myself the most um, because I want to be able to have something to leave these kids, these grandkids, you know, so I think, I think I'm my biggest motivator and I have to be because people fall off, you know, people, people come and go out of your life. Everybody's not forever. Right. So you know, if you lose a person that's been your biggest cheerleader, you have to have some type of, you know, cheerleader in yourself to say, oh, well, he or she is gone. I got to do this myself. Go on and get that. Go on and do that now while they're around so that when they go on, you don't miss them. <laughs> yeah. Again, another awesome perspective. You have such a strong leadership, um, just kind of quality about you. It's like, okay, you. I want to listen more. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to not be so... You know, I'm not going to procrastinate as much. If I want this done, I need to kick myself in the booty and get. Oh, going. listen, no, no, no. I'm the biggest procrastinator. <laughs> yeah, I'm a you Leo. also can talk yourself into getting the job. I but. can. I can. I'm a Leo. I'm a huge procrastinator, but I work best under pressure. Like some of my best work has been done in 24, 48 hours. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's stressful as hell. <laughs> It's unnecessary stress I put myself through. Yeah. However, 
I've noticed, and that's the other thing when you got, when y'all are doing things, you know, pay attention, pay attention to what works for you. Um, yes, 24, 48 hours is stressful as hell. However, I produce some of my best work in that time frame. You know, when I, when it's last minute, I, I mean, I do things here and there throughout, but the final thing is usually like to make sure everything's the, all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted is usually the last 24, 48 hours. And that's just when I'm the most productive. And it's probably because I'm like, girl, you done wasted all this time. If you don't get this together, this is what it's going to look like. So, you know, just, just pay attention to when your energy is the most high, when you work best, you know, when your best work is produced. And, you know, sometimes procrastination isn't a bad thing if it works for you. Right. Yeah. I mean, everybody works in different ways and has, mm-hmm. right. Some people, you know, definitely that's not their thing. And others, like you said, you can produce some of the best work in the last yep. 24 to 48 hours. So it's finding what works for you. And that's great. Right. It's not a one, one size fits all. And right. you know, I, I, yeah. I, I go back to you thinking about, you know, numbers and crunching and math. You thought that was your, your go-to and here yep. you are on the style. Yep. Side. So yep. and you nothing to do with numbers. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Except sizes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so you mentioned this too earlier. You do work with men as well. Yes, I do. I actually, y'all, I love my I love my women, but I prefer men. Let me tell y'all why men are so easy. You can tell them, even if they don't look good in something, if you tell them they look good and it's coming from a woman, they're going to get it. I mean, I don't lie to my clients. Like, I'm not going to do that. But men are just so, you know, they men are um it's important to them how we perceive them and what they look like to us that's that's an ego thing for them so if you tell a man he look good in something he's gonna buy it because he's gonna say oh if i look good in this to her i'm gonna look good in this to her (laughs) you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. so they're like super easy on that aspect they're super easy to work with um they are more detailed because like i said their clothes are cut You maybe have two different, two or three different cuts for them. And, you know, if they want, and it's up to them, a lot of them, you know, some of them are, are, are fine with the way clothes are cut, but then you have some that have to have tailoring. And, and for us too, for women, like they're, if you're going to invest in clothes, they need to be what you're going to, you know, what you're going to look good in. So sometimes you have to have some stuff altered too. There's nothing wrong with that, but if it's something that you know you're going to have for a while, you know, you're not trying to lose weight or gain weight, you know, and you know it's something you really invested in, have it fixed, have it have it tailored so that it looks really good on you. Y'all, when y'all look good, money comes. <laughs> you ain't even got to work hard. <laughs> Tip number three. This is so good, Daphne. <laughs> when you look good, that money starts, you attract, you attract what you, how you look and how you feel. So if you look like money, you're going to attract money and mm-hmm. you can look like money without spending a lot of money. Ooh, even a better tip. So speaking <laughs> of tips, I'm going to see if I can get one more good one um, from you in your, in your vault. So let's say okay. somebody's interested in, they need a, a closet refresher, especially after this past year. What are mm-hmm. kind of three state, do you have three staple items that everybody should, or you recommend that they have in their closet? Um, a denim jacket. And this is this is universal. This is if you're in the business world or if you're an entrepreneur, because as an entrepreneur, we have more leeway with what we wear versus, you know, someone who works in a corporate office or something like that. Um, Denim jacket, um, some nice slacks, any color Um, and for women pumps and for guys dresses. And I recommend this is my big I've really just started recommending this some type of white tennis shoe. It can be Chuck's. Yeah. It can be a $10 pair from Rainbow. Yep. It's not about how much it costs. It's how you style it and how you wear it. Um, those things are versatile. And I literally just gave y'all an outfit. You did. I know. And I like, <laughs> I'm loving the white tennis shoe tip because I've recently, like I've seen some suits styled with the tennis shoe. And that's my favorite thing to think about because I cannot be in heels all day. So I'm like, oh right. yeah, finally we get to wear yeah. tennis shoes if we have to yeah. stop. <laughs> yep. And get y'all invest in a good pair of white tennis shoes. Chucks are chucks are great. Yeah. They're universal. They go with everything. You can wear tennis. Y'all, y'all can put tennis shoes with anything. It's just about how you style it and how you make it look. Yeah. And um, you'll see a lot. I've I've noticed a lot lady it late uh, lately. Um, athletic wear, 
you'll have some joggers. I love joggers. I love the um, vegan leather joggers. I'm a huge fan. Um, but you can put them with sneakers. You can put them with booties. You can put them with pumps. You can put them with sandals. Ooh. And you'll have a different look every time. Your accessories are what makes your, pulls your look together. So you can have a plain white t-shirt, a pair of jeans, but what you build around that is what's going to determine your style and what's going to give you a look. The other thing is have a good variety of shirts, mm -hmm. um, colors, styles, because you can swap those out with your bottoms and have a whole different outfit. My gosh, Stephanie, you just gave us more than I could have asked. <laughs> awesome. So speaking of which, how, what's it look like if somebody wants to work with you and like, do you start with a consultation? How does it go? And what are the choices? Yes, I do start with a consultation. Um, it's called a style strategy session. You can book those um, on my website. Um, basically what that is, is we'll talk and um, it's a 20 minute talk. I'll find out exactly what you need, what you're looking for. Um, if I can do it, we're not, I'm not always a match with everybody. Everybody, I like to cuss. So if you're a big church goer, I'm probably not the one you want to work with. Um, <laughs> but, and that's fine, but I can refer you to somebody. Um, I have a huge database of like makeup artists, photographers, hair, like I have connections with all kinds of folks. But um, so we do the style, we do the style strategy session. I see what you need, you know, assess what you need. And then I make recommendations on what services or service you might need for me to get the job done. And then we just go from there. I send a questionnaire, um, cause of course I need to know your sizes, um, you know, what your, what inspires your style, like who you like, you know, who dresses, how you like, would like to dress if you had a dream dress type or whatever, um, where you like to shop, things like that. So that I'm not, and it just makes things easier, you know, for me. So I'm not guessing about what you want, yeah. what you need, things like that. So, sure. and then after that, it's pretty much cut and dry. I do a lot. 85% um, of my stuff is virtual. I have a, um, I sent you have your own virtual closet with me where you, I put your looks together and usually nine times out of 10, all, everything is interchangeable. Um, you usually get about three to four looks and everything is in, in those looks are interchangeable with other things in the looks. So you're getting more for your money. Um, you can either purchase everything yourself or you can come back and say, Daphne, this is what I want. I'll tap, I'll total everything up for you with the shipping and everything. You send me the payment plus my fee. Well, you already have paid my fee. You send me everything. I can have it shipped to you or to me. If you're local, you can come to me. We'll do a virtual, we'll do a fitting or we can do a virtual fitting. I do, I go through the whole process because I also want to, I like to follow up and see how the clothes actually look on my client. Cause everything, just cause it looks good. Once you get it, it might not be your body type. It might not fit you correctly. Um, and then my other biggest thing is working with what you already have, building around what you already have. People, we shop, we buy things that we like. We see something we're visual. We see something we like and we buy it. We don't even think about how it's going to look on us, what we're going to wear it with right. or anything. So a lot of people, when you hear that, I got a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear, that's because you buy things that you like, but you don't nece necessarily know how to wear them. That's where I come in. I can take you in your closet and show you how to wear the clothes that you already have. <laughs> So good. I love this. And so this all starts. So that link is on your website for some yes, to schedule a chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you have some really upcoming, exciting news to talk about. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about the award you're up for. So I am uh, nominated for wardrobe stylist of the year for the Carolinas. That's taking uh, North Carolina and South Carolina. We actually have the award ceremony this Saturday. So I'm excited about that. Um, I have a competition coming up that I've been asked, asked to be involved in. Ooh, that little country came out right now. <laughs> I said ax. I'm like, wait a minute, I'll talk like that. <laughs> um, so that's in June. I'm uh, with Columbia Fashion Week. I'm involved in that. Um, what else? Your Goodness. online boutique. Oh, well, let me get to these first because I, I already did say so, those are so fun. Thank you. These are called my tutu hoops. Ooh. Um, details by Daphne. I make handmade earrings. Um, I just these are like my newest line. These are the little uh tutu material, the tool. Um, but I also do handmade uh vegan leather earrings as well. 
Every now and then I'll add some boutique style earrings um, that I didn't make, but they're, I'm really big on um, not having a whole lot of the same thing because I've always been the type of person I don't like to wear what everybody else has, even though I'm going to wear it different. But I feel like my accessories, I'm real big on statement pieces, um, things that are conversation starters. So um, I, have, uh, I have a tad bit of anxiety. So my hands, all y'all see me, I talk with my hands. My hands yeah. always have to be moving. And I was sitting around one day like, what can I do with my hands that I can also make some money with? While I'm sitting here watching TV or whatever I'm doing. And here comes the earring idea. So that's how the earring idea. I love it. I love earrings. They're one of my favorite accessories. So that's how the earring thing came in. Details by Daphne. I'm going to be adding clutches this year um, sometime. So they'll have... Some of them will be matching, some of them won't, but I'll be doing just earrings and clutches. And then um, my online boutique, I've always wanted to do a boutique. I used to think I wanted to do brick and mortar, but I don't because I don't want to be tied. Listen, my dream is to have a mobile tiny home and I'm going to travel in between my children's homes. So like for three months, I'll be at one kid's house, three months, like I'm going to run up their bills and all that yes. for a little while. Yes. So <laughs> I don't want anything that I'm, committed to being in one spot yeah. um so we'll just do the online boutique but it's gonna be um I'm real big on being different and not doing what everybody else is doing so I'm not gonna put all my little info into the world but it's gonna be um different it'll definitely be an experience mm -hmm. and um you'll be able to when you shop when you purchase you'll also get a. Uh, You'll get access to my styling services. Let's just say that. Um, but it'll be in a different form. Like it may not be just, you know, it may not be one-on-one. -on -one. You'll still be able to book me for styling, but I'm going to give you something when you shop with me and purchase. That's the style. That little that's cliffhanger. Styling. That's all going to make your corner <laughs> check back. Yeah, I'm going to give you something. Um, so, yeah. I'm excited about that. And it, it kind of refers back to one of the tips I gave earlier, but we're not, Ooh. Renee, I'll tell you later. But I'm Ooh, tell now we have like a little <laughs> clue. This is so good. <laughs> um, do you have a timeline when you kind of anticipate it? Uh, of course, everything's subject to change. So no yes. one fooled anyone, you know, we can all change. So I want to do a soft launch um, in July around my birthday. And I said soft because I fully launched my earrings business last year for my birthday and trying to celebrate my birthday because my birthday is a holiday. <laughs> trying to celebrate my birthday and launch a business, a new business was like, what were you thinking? So I said, I'll never do that again. <laughs> so I'll do a soft launch um, probably around my birthday and also my one year you know, anniversary thing for details by Daphne. Um, but I'll do a full launch, uh, most likely Black Friday. Cool. Love it. Yeah. Putting those so goals out into the universe. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, gosh. I have so enjoyed this conversation. You have just shared so many cool, insightful tips Thank about you. style and confidence and just kind of rocking to your own design, so to speak. And I just Thank love you. it. Um, and for our listeners and viewers, again, head to Daphne's website, your style should talk shit dot style. And there she is. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I didn't even notice that until just now. Thank you. Um, but you can see some examples of Daphne's clients and her work, the link for that conversation for the 20 minute chat to see if y'all are a good fit for each other. And your earrings are on there too, which are super cool. I was finding the dusters. I was kind of fun to look at some of the duster ones you had yeah. too. So those were cool. Um, so we ask all of our guests, uh, of course, you know, it's the Red Bra Project. So we're always curious about what a Red Bra moment is for you. And the Red Bra is more of a concept, kind of an idea. It's kind of like your, your superwoman cape. You always have it on underneath. Nobody has to see it, but you know it's there. So when you look back, you're like, yeah, I did that. And I'm going to remember that I did that because that's going to get me through the next tough thing. So what's one of those Red Bra moments for you, Daphne? Oh, my goodness. I've had quite a bit. But I think my, I think my biggest thing has been like the most recent. So, and I just, this is my first time like really sharing this. Aww. So y'all, I might get just a tad bit emotional. Um, I was uh, molested at a young age by my mother's husband. Um, and I've always had this. And I think that's part of the reason I was never like girly until I got in my twenties. That might be part of that. Um, but I've also just started embracing... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm 47, y'all. I'll be 48 in two months. And I've just started embracing the whole um, sensual side of myself. So I've been investing more in lingerie. And it actually, it's like a self-care thing for me now. Um, I have a ton of clothes. Um, and I've always had, of course, matching undergarments or whatever, but like the next level type <laughs> lingerie. Yeah. So it's kind of been more, it's really, it really has been like empowering me. And I'm like, huh. Cause I've always been, you know, I sleep in t-shirts and sweatpants. It's just one of them produ- uh, protective things, like a shield type thing. Yeah. Um, so for me to, you know, I've been wondering why am I buying all this lingerie? Like, hmm. I ain't dating. I ain't trying to date right now. I'm too busy with business and these grandkids and you know, everything else. So I'm like, what is, what is this? What is, what's bringing this on? And I got to thinking, oh, like, and it's crazy. You know, even in your forties, fifties, y'all are going to have aha moments. (laughs) You're not, you ain't going to understand why you're doing something. You're going to start doing it. And then you're going to think about it and you'll be like, so I think it's, I think for me, it's like a coming out of, um, something that's kind of, it hasn't had a super hold on me, but unintentionally it has. Sure. Um, so now I'm starting to come out of that even more. Like I've always been able to deal with it because I never blamed myself for it happening or anything. I've always, you know, never had that issue. Um, but I've had other things that have, you know, that it's affected. And I realized when I started with this lingerie thing, I'm like, oh, this is like, this is what it's from. I've never really, you know, I, and, and you won't believe it because normally when you see me dressed, when I'm dressed, my signature, I have cleavage mm-hmm. and I have a high split if I'm wearing a skirt or a dress. Those are my two signatures. I either, one or the other or both. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do, I dress. It's classy, but a little provocative. You know, it's sexy. It's sexy, yeah. classy. I guess. Classy with a little um, class. I like Yeah, it. just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't dress like a grandma. My kids told me I don't dress like a grandma. Well, and I never it's glamour. I mean, I don't. Yeah, what's yeah. dressing like a grandma anyway? Like, yeah, right. dresses with them little flowers. I'm not wearing that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I think for me, um, that has been a personal, you know, a personal red bra um superhero type thing because I'm actually uh coming into myself more you know people you can I don't care how old you get you can always learn something about yourself and you always will you just have to again like I said I just out of nowhere I started buying these things and I'm like why am I buying this like I why I'm probably not gonna sleep in the stuff or even use it but it's it was cute but then I said "Uh uh-huh that's what it is. I'm finally like coming into wanting, you know what I'm saying? Wanting to be a little more um, sexy, I guess, even yeah. though nobody's going to see it. Um, you are, you so, know, you are. So that's what Yeah, matters. right. And that's what I'm saying for me. I think here we go again. For me, I think it's been a, um, it, it's part of my self-care now. Like, you know, I've been just getting a few pieces here and there. And I was sitting here earlier and I was like, shoot I'm talking about I ain't gonna wear this I can put this with a pair of joggers and a blazer what y'all talking about (laughs) I love that yes (laughs) so yeah so that I I think recent that has been my red bra my red bra moments I love it thank (laughs) you so much for sharing such a vulnerable share and just listening to your perspective once again I mean you have given us a little bit of snippets into your perspective along your personal journey from years ago to now and the fact that you listen to your intuition you're like I'm buying this but I'm not sure why and then it's (laughs) together and you're like now I get it like yeah that's huge so um yes rock on those lingerie lingerie thank you yes um thank you so much again for being with us to all of our listeners and people who are watching our replay go and follow Daphne what is the handle that they can find you on Instagram the image creator I am the image creator pretty much all across the board Very cool. Awesome. Um, You have given us some awesome tips and perspectives. So thank you so much for being a guest with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And we close out every one of our shows with a quote. And the quote that we picked for you is if there's one thing I'm willing to bet on, it's myself. And that's from a beautiful, strong style icon and woman herself, Beyonce. 
I think that everything you have <laughs> shared with us, again, came back to you. you and your self-belief and you cheering yourself on. And it's such thank an you. awesome story. So thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you to everybody who tuned in. We appreciate you guys so much. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe for show reminders. The bell's somewhere up here. And come and follow us at The Red Bra Project on Instagram. That's where most of all of our stuff happens. You can go to theredbraproject.com. If you're a reader, all of our guests will have a blog format so you can read about their story. You can watch on YouTube or you can download your um, this episode on your favorite podcast. So thank you guys. Go on, keep rocking it out there. And we appreciate you all so much. Bye-bye.